This video covers Algebra 19.1, which is over square roots. Um, so before the bell, please make sure you've picked up all papers. We are starting a new notes packet, and you can have baggie and calculator out. So a couple of quick reminders, five bonus points on test 19. Uh, this is on your stamp sheet, but we have 15 school days left until summer. This is our last unit. We just have one last unit left, and then we will take a test, review for finals, and take finals, and we will be done. So make sure you are attentive and paying attention. So this should be the first page on your notes packet. Um, it asks you to find the value of each of the following radical expressions, check the perfect squares chart, or use the little blue calculators in class. If your teacher still has some of these calculators that you can use, then you are free to use those. Also, if you have a phone calculator and you're not in class, because in class we have little blue calculators or other calculators um, that you can use, but if you are not in class, let me show you very briefly. This is my phone right here on the right side. Okay, looks like a normal phone. So on my phone, if I click calculator, this is what it looks like. If you turn off the, um, like some people have the orientation lock on, if you turn it off, and turn your phone to the side, there's a square root option right here. So if I want, like the first problem is problem 25, you have to type in the number first, but if you click the square root button, the number that comes up will tell you the square root, and you can do that here, okay? So that is on the, um, oh. so that is on your phone. Okay, um, now I'm going to show you if you still have a calculator. Most of the stuff that we're doing is very basic calculations. Um, so if you have to turn in your calculator or your teacher no longer has calculators, then that's what's happening. Oh my goodness. So problem one on your notes is the square root of 25, and they are just wanting a simple number. So today all we are doing is simplifying. Sometimes simplifying is quick and easy. Sometimes it takes a little more work. So with the square root of 25 on the calculator, you can do the square root button, which I did second x squared, so you might want to write that to get to the square root. It's the second button and then the x squared button. And then you type it in exactly like you see it, and the square root of 25 is 5. Again, you can do this on a phone calculator. You can do them on the little blue calculators. The little blue calculators work just like phone calculators, where you type in the number and then hit the square root button. So problem two, the square root of 169, so we do the square root, 169 is 13. Also, way back when, when we first talked about exponents, we did a very tiny square root thing, and there's a square root chart that should still be in your binder to help you with this. You can also just Google perfect square chart, and it will show them for you, but remember, you can't use Google on the test, so you've got to find some way to simplify these. So second square root 441 is 21. And all I'm doing is simplifying, so getting rid of the square root if possible. So problem four, when we have something like this, I'm going to wait on the number in front and take care of the square root part first. So the square root of 144 is 12. And then 2 times 12 is 24. So I'm simply simplifying. If you have a multi-step problem, my best advice for you is to do the square root part first, then multiply. If you're working on your phone, this is how I would do it on my phone. On my phone, I would turn it to the side. I would say 144. What's the square root? It's 12, and then times 2 is 24, okay? So if I'm doing a problem like 5 on my phone, I have to break this up into two different pieces. So 1, I click the square root button. The square root of 1 is just 1. 64 square root is 8. The negative was in front of the problem the whole time. So you just have to take things slower if you're working on your phone or a different type of calculator, like the blue calculators. Okay. 
So these we would break up 169 square root is 13 to 25 square root is 15 and then in your calculator you can actually on the on the phone you can use these little parentheses to say 13 divided by 15 close parentheses and then I want to multiply it times 5 and that's 4.3 repeating so that's 4 and 1 third or 13 over 3 Okay, so there's a couple different ways that you can attack those problems. Just make sure whatever method you are using is solid. If you still have one of these calculators, either because you checked it out or they're in your classroom or you personally own one, then please feel free to use those because that's probably the fastest. I'm just showing you what will happen if you don't have a perfect calculator or a nice one. Okay, now the bottom half of these notes we're still being asked to simplify. However, if the square root is not a perfect square, we have to look for pairs and create factor trees. So when we look at problem seven, problem seven has been done for us. What they did was they said 63 is seven times nine. Seven cannot be broken up any further, but nine can be represented with three times three. So to get to 63, I would do three times three times seven. And I can check that in the calculator. 3 times 3 times 7 better equal 63. And it does. Now when you're looking at your factors, you are looking for pairs. We've talked about this originally. And remember, in order to go outside, these people are all under the square root right now. They're all under the house. And in order to go outside and play, you have to have someone who wants to play the exact same game, is thinking the exact same thing, whatever. So whoever goes outside to play, you bring out to the front. So the threes go outside to play. So you are looking for pairs because pairs want to play the same thing. The threes want to go outside and play football. So the threes go outside, just like you might say, like the twins went outside. So the threes go outside and play. The seven has nobody that wants to play, so seven has to stay inside. Okay, so to simplify this, we're creating factor trees. We're breaking the factor trees up as much as we can and looking for pairs. So for problem eight, 98 has been broken up into two and 49. Two cannot be broken down further because it is prime. Basically, you're looking for once you get to the point of two and one, anything with a one doesn't help you. 49 can be broken down into 7 and 7, but 7 and 7 cannot go any further. So my factors are 7, 7, and 2 still under the house. So 7, 7, and 2 are all inside the house. 7s want to go outside and they both want to play basketball. So the 7s are going to go outside. Remember that you must have a pair to go outside, but once you go outside, you just say the sevens. You say what pair is going outside. Do not bring both pairs outside. The two is staying inside the house because the two does not have anybody to go play. Now, you can check this. Um, I'll show you how to do it on a phone, and you would do it the exact same way, just comparing decimals. I'll show you in this calculator first. If you have these calculators, I would type in the square root of 98 and get that decimal. And I would type in my answer and see that it's the same decimal. On a phone, I would do pretty much the same thing. So on a phone, I would say 98 square root is 9.99. And I might write that down. And then I would do the square root part first. So you would do the two, you would hit the square root button, and then the seven. This is specifically on a phone calculator. So two, hit the square root times seven, and you get the same decimal. So if you take your answer and plug it into a calculator and you can see that that answer is the same as the original, then you've done it correctly. Now, my advice to you is to always start by plugging them into the calculator because some of them 
will work nicely. So like I didn't, I did not set a good example, but the square root of 98, if you get a decimal, then you need to break it down. So the square root of 256, oh look, I got 16, so I don't have to break it down. Now, if you do break it down, you would do something like 16 and 16 and say, hey, wait, that's a pair. It works nicely. There's nothing left inside the house, which means it's a perfect square root. So let's look at problem 10. Problem 10 is a bit complicated. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to ignore this 2. Don't scratch it out because you still need it. But I'm going to ignore the 2 and look at the 48 for now. So 48, they broke up into 4 and 12. Now remember with factor trees, if you break them up differently, that's okay. If you did that as 2 and 24, that's fine. Just make sure you break them up all the way. So 4 can be broken up into 2 and 2, and those 2s cannot be broken up further. 12 can be broken up into 2 and 6. 2 cannot be broken down further. 6 can be broken down into 2 and 3. And remember, the 6 is not part of my thing. The 4 is not part. The 12 is not part because I've broken that down. The 4 is still being represented, but it's represented by different pieces. Okay? So what I didn't show you is that every time I solve these problems, I plug them in. So 2 times the square root of 48. Dang it, that's not nice. Now, what you can do is remember 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 3 and make sure you get 48. And I did. So I've broken it down because 2, 2, 2, 2, and 3 cannot be broken down any further. And I'm only using the leaves at the end of my trees. Remember, we do not use the numbers that we use to get to the leaves. So while these are helpful, they are not being used to find pairs. So I have 2, 2, 2, 2, and 3 as my factors. A set of 2's goes outside. Another set of 2's goes outside. The 3 has nobody to play with, so it stays inside. So we have two sets of 2's that are going outside. Now, if you have pairs that go outside, let's say these 2's want to go play football, and these 2's want to go play football. Once they get outside, they're like, hey, you guys want to play football. We want to play football. Let's group up together. So whatever goes outside, you multiply. So I have two sets of two, which is represented by four. Anything that stays under the house can play inside. They just can't go outside. So if you had something else, three can play with somebody else inside. So pretty much if you're outside, you can play with people who are outside. If you're inside, you can play with people who are inside. And when you play with them, you multiply. So we're now at four square roots of three, okay? So just to do a quick check, we're just worried about the 48 right now. So the square root of 48 and four square roots of three are the same decimal. So I've simplified it accurately. Now this piece over here says, don't forget this two in front. Don't forget this guy, okay? So we bring this guy down and we wait until the very end, until we have simplified everything else. So the four square roots of three was already simplified and we're gonna multiply it by that two in front. When we multiply, outside the house can play with outside the house. Inside plays with inside. So it's kind of like segregation a little bit here. Two and four are outside so they can play together but three is grounded and three can't go anywhere. So two times four is eight and the square root of three has to stay inside because it's grounded, no one wants to play, maybe it didn't shower and it stinks, we don't know. So we have 8 square roots of 3 as my answer. When I plug this into the calculator, I'm going to plug in the whole thing. 2 times the square root of 48. 8 times the square root of 3. And I'm checking to make sure the decimals are exactly the same. And they are, so I've done this correctly. So let me look at the next one. 5 square root 72. Dang it, it's decimals, so I have to break it up. So the square root of 72, 72 can be broken up into 8 and 9. Remember, there are lots of ways to break up numbers, so don't worry if you pick something different. Just stick with it. 8 is 2 and 4. 2 cannot be broken up any further, but 4 can break up into 2 and 2. 
9 can be broken up into 3 and 3 and cannot be broken up any further. So these are my leaves. 2, 2, 2, 3, and 3. So remember, right now these are all under the house. To go outside, they have to be ungrounded. They have to find someone to play with. So 2 is going to go outside. 3 is going to go outside. And this little 2 stays inside because it has no one that wants to play. Outsides can play together. So 2 times 3 is 6 square roots of 2. Now, I look back at my original problem. There was something out front. So I bring that down. And then 5 times 6, these are both outside, so they can play outside. Inside stays alone. So 30 square roots of 2 should be equivalent. I have the original right here, so 30 square root 2. My decimals are the same, so these should be very quick and easy for you to check. Make sure you are showing adequate work as you complete them, especially if your uh, assignments have the answers on the bottom. So the square root of 216 does not work nicely, so I have to break it up. Let's see, 216, is it divisible by 4? I'm just taking a guess here. Okay, that is 4 and 54. You could say it's even, so it's divisible by 2, something like that. So 4 is 2 and 2, and both of those can stop there. 54 is a factor of 9, so 9 and 6. 6 is, I'm sorry, 9 is 3 and 3. 6 is 2 and 3, so a quick check because that's kind of a big one. 2 times 2 times 3 times 3 times 2 times 3 is 216. So 2, 2, 2, 3, 3, 3. All of these are the factors that make up 216. So remember, these are still inside the house. In order to get outside the house, you have to have a pair. So there's a pair of twos and a pair of threes coming out. Inside the house is a two and a three. These friends do not have partners to go play with them, so they have to stay inside. So two times three is six. On the inside, two times three is six. So this should simplify to six square roots of six. So because my original is not there anymore, two sixteen. And then 6 square roots of 6 is the same decimal. So to refresh your steps are to try it on the calculator because some of them work nicely. If you get a decimal, then you need to do a factor tree and go all the way down to the very smallest numbers. Then you look for pairs to go outside and then multiply outsides with outsides and insides with insides and do not cross over with them. Okay. Now your assignment is one page so this is what you are being asked to do this one page right here. Your answers are on the bottom. However, let me warn you, there are eight open-ended problems on your test. So if your plan is to type in decimals and compare decimals, that's great for test-taking strategies, but will not help you on open-ended problems. And the further we get into this unit, the more simplifying you will have to do. So if you do not take care of business now, I promise you it will ding you on every single assignment in Unit 19. So take your time. Learn how to simplify these very nicely. It might take you some time because you don't have all the square roots memorized, and that's okay. But make sure you are using your time wisely. I expect that you are working for the rest of class. When you are done, you can ask Mr. Fink for a stamp.